Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be going over how to make this cool sleek jQuery category filter that you can use for your portfolio. Ok, so as always we're going to start off in Sublime, so I've got a blank skeleton here with the exception of a style sheet, which is in the CSS folder and it's called style plus CSS and that's open here. And again, as always I've defined some default parameters, no margin, no padding, no list style, no text decoration and every piece of text on this page is going to be um, written in open sans. And speaking of open sans, I've linked that here under the fonts section. And I've also linked two scripts, JavaScript, so I've got um, the Google hosted jQuery, which is what we're going to be using to make our slider work. And I've also linked functionality.js, which is spelled incorrectly but it's open here nonetheless, it's in the JavaScript folder. And I've created some default images, so I've got some pictures of some cats, some pictures of some dogs, some mice and a snake. Um, this is just an example, of course, if you're using this on your portfolio, these would be examples of your work. But again, um, I didn't really have too many pieces of work that I wanted to show in the video, so I decided to go for the cuter option of some animals. Okay, so we're going to start off by creating a div with the class of category container. And what this is going to be is, this is going to be the container that holds all of your possible categories. So if you're a designer, you might have, you know, art and design as one category, you might have web development as another category, and then you can show off your work to people who are just interested in hiring you as a developer. They can click the web development category and see all your development work. If they want to hire you as a graphic designer, they can click the design section and see all your graphic design work. So inside of this, we're going to create a paragraph with the class of category item and that's literally going to be exactly what it says it's going to be a category item and now i'm going to give it the id of all because this is going to be the all selector so when you click this every single piece of work in your arsenal will show up and then just copy this down a few times so all and then i'm going to have cats in this obviously this of course can be your examples of your work your categories that you you want to show people and dogs mice and snakes you can delete this one and now we need to change the ID to match the a single version of what we have written. So all stays the same. Cats will be cat because that's the single for the plural cats. The same will be dog and then mouse and snake. And there's a reason why we're doing this and you'll see later. So now I want to give this some style, of course. Now here in our CSS, we want to give the category container some parameters, say width of 800 pixels. And the good thing about this is we're building it in such a way that you could set the, the width to 1000 pixels, 200 pixels, and the rest of the elements will adhere to this width. And you'll see why this works later. So say now also display of block, make it a block level element, which means that we can now use the margin zero auto technique to center it, so margin zero on the top and bottom, and then get the total width of the entire page, get the entire width of this container, which is 800 pixels, and then say, okay, what's the remainder? Cut it in half, put half on the left, half on the right, thus center in the container. Also, now we wanna say overflow hidden to stop anything that comes outside the boundaries of this container being shown. So now we've got the category items, so we can apply some styles to this also. Of course we want them to be floated left of each other so that they're all in line as opposed to being stacked on top of each other. Set the width to 20%. I have five, so you know, 100% divided by five is 20%. Um, background color of white in this case. You can of course set this to whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna say padding of 20 on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. Um, text align, center, cursor, pointer, so the user knows, okay, something happens if I click this. And then font size, 15 pixels, and color black. And now if we look at this now, you know, we get this. And what I've done is I've added a hover state also. So we say category item hover, background color of black this time, so we're inverting it, color of white. And now if we look at this now, you see it inverts, which is cool, but it's stylistic, so it's not a completely necessary. And now for the main part, so we want to create the items inside of our kind of um, array of elements. So now we want to create the block container, which is going to be the container for all our separate blocks. So, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Now create some styles for this. Again, set the width to whatever you set the width of the category container to, you know, so in this case, 800 pixels. Um, give a display of block again, margin, zero or throw to center it again and then box sizing 
for the box, which means that if we say 800 pixels in width and then we give a padding of 10 pixels either side, it, w it won't add 10 pixels, making it um, 820 pixels. It will then just say, okay, take 20 pixels away from the width and then add that as padding. So it'll never be bigger than what we define the width as. I'm going to run this by you really quickly because I've already previously created these and I don't want to watch you have me type these out again. So we now create an image with the source of whatever your first image is. So in my case, it's in the images folder and it's called cat underscore JPEG. And if you look at this now, it'll just be a really big image of a cat inside some sort of paper, which isn't what we want, as cute as it is. And give it a class of animal item and also give it a class of what it is in relation to up here. So see how we have cats and we have the idea of cat. And this is going to be, of course, is a cat. So say animal item, cat, and then do this for every single image you have. So if this was a mouse, we create, change this to mouse. You know, if this was a graphic design project, you might change it to GFX, whatever you want, as long as it relates to whatever these say up here. So again, I'm going to copy this out. I already have these written out. And then if you look at this now, it'll just be a load of images all over the page. So now we can create some styles that'll allow it to look more like what I showed you in our example. So we're going to define animal item and we're going to say box sizing again, border box. So let's copy this from up here and then float left. Padding of two pixels width of 20%, which is important. If you want five to a row, like I have, then set it to 20%. If you want if you want four to a row, set it to 25%. You know, work it out yourself from there. It's a pretty cool process to work out and play around with. Transition now, which is important to the transition process of when you click the um, categories. So say all, we want all the you know parameters to be affected by it. 0 0.4 seconds, which is 400 milliseconds. You can work it out yourself, you know, play around with this and set the animation type to ease in out. And if we take a quick look at this now, see all the all the elements are in line, perfect, as they should be. But this doesn't do anything yet. You see? Now we're going to create the functionality to make it work. So we're going to define document, which it says, you know, find the document element, and then say when it's ready, run a function. And that's how that's written. And now anything that's inside of here is waiting to be run when the document is ready to run jQuery. So define category item. So say the category item, which is any one of these. And then I say, okay, when it's been clicked, so say click, wait for one of these to be clicked and then say function, run a function after one of these have been clicked. And the function is gonna say, okay, create a variable called category and it's set it equal to this dot attribute ID. So if I just alert this really quickly, so if I say alert category, then you'll see how this works. So refresh the page and nothing happens. Then we click cats and it'll alert cat. Click dogs, it'll alert dog, my mouse, snake and all which is perfect. This is working perfectly so far, but we don't need this necessarily. So get rid of this. And then we want to say, all right, if the category equals all, because we're going to do something a little bit differently. If the category is all, then we want to define, all right, so the animal item dot add class hide. And now we need to create this hide class. So we're going back into our CSS and create a class called hide. And now this is up to you entirely. So however you want the box to be treated, however you want it to leave the page after the, you know, after when they're all hidden. So what I've done is I said transform scale, set the scale to zero, and then also set the width to zero, the padding to zero, and then set the same um, transition as we've set for the item like that. And now you'll notice, watch, click all, and then all the items disappear. Um, it might be a little bit laggy on your end, but that was as smooth as anything on my side. So, you know, refresh, get them all back. And now we carry on defining our JS. So now, of course, we want to say, okay, how do we get them back? You know, of course, we want to get these back onto the screen. So now we're going to use JavaScript and say set time out function. And again, this works the same way. Go down a few lines, close this off. But here, 
we're going to do a comma and then set the time 300. So this basically says, all right, so hide everything, wait for 300 milliseconds, and then do something else. So this is what we wanted to do after 300 milliseconds. The animal item dot remove class hide. I'll add a semicolon to the end here. And now if you look, when we click the all button, the hide and then show again. And this is useful if we're on, for example, the cats category, looking at some cats, then we click all, it'll hide all of the cats, then show absolutely everything again when we click all, which is what we wanted to do. Perfect. But of course now we need to say, okay, what if it isn't all? What if the category isn't all? What if someone has clicked cats or dogs? So now we need to give an else clause, say else. All right, so if you click dogs, for example, so again, say animal item hide. So get rid of them all, get rid of all of the items, get rid of all of these blocks when it's been clicked and then only show ones that match the category. And how do we do this? So we've stored the ID in the in this variable category. And the ID for the, this is cat, the ID for this is cat, but the class for this and this is cat. So we say, okay, only show the ones where the class equals this ID, you see? So we're gonna do the set timeout function again. So we can just copy this paste that back in there. But instead of saying animal um, animal item remove class, we're gonna define it this way and say, okay, dot, which is how we define classes, of course, plus category. So this will print out the dot and then the name of the category, so dot cat. So we're saying dot cat remove class hide. So it basically only shows the cats or the dogs or the mice. So we refresh and click cats. Hide everything, only show the cats. Click dogs, hide everything, only show the dogs. Click all, hide everything, bring everything back. And, ev and this will work no matter, you can add a million different items, you can add, you know, take some away, you can add new categories. And like I mentioned earlier, as long as we've set it to percent, everything set to percent. So now if we changed, you know, this to, from 800 to 1,200, and then also change this to 1,200, everything's built in such a way that it'll scale up properly, you see? and you can, everything will work perfectly. And again, it might be really laggy on your end, but this is working smooth on my end. Um, I'm gonna provide this as a free download from my website in the description. So please go there and download it and have a play around with it. Uh, please let me know if this was useful. You know, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please leave a comment, give me some feedback and subscribe if you want more content and tutorials like this. I also make speed coding videos as well if you're interested. So thanks a lot for watching this video and I hope to see you back here on this channel again for the next one.